Coming to the topic of first two subjects, first two presentations, Indian poultry industry is expected to grow at 8 to 10 percent per year. <clears throat> the industry has a huge potential to grow, not only from the consumption point of view, but also a straight perspective. The increase in fast food and increase fast food restaurant and increase and increased popularity of the fun foods, etc., have attracted investments in the chicken processing facilities. Many success stories exist in our country on today's big poultry biggies who once upon a time were a small or medium players in the industry. Chicken processors own retail shops are a good distribution channel. This ensures a market or an outlet for meat products not absorbed otherwise. This trend also helps in encouraging consumers to move from wet market to retail market. <clears throat> However, changing consumers' consumption would be a slow process. The industry still needs to address the large share of wet markets. Awareness of hygienic meat consumption, <clears throat> excuse me, Volatility of input and, ex input and output prices and raising the standards of the industry in order to compete, in order to participate with the international trade. Friends, change is the law of nature and poultry industry is no exception. The consumer, the consumption trend is changing towards safer, and packaged foods, packaged drinking water, and packaged homogenized, homogenized milk are a few examples. The innovations, innovations, I mean, in, in today's or in this fast moving world, due to time constraints, the younger generation prefers packaged and ready-to-eat type foods. Innovations in the marketing of poultry products at affordable cost are going to be the key areas affecting small and medium players in the industry. Coming to the topic of respiratory diseases, Newcastle disease, infectious bronchitis, infectious rheumotracheitis, mycoplasmosis, infectious coryza continue to be a global challenge despite the availability of very effective and good vaccines. They are particularly important for our country because they are so, they are so widespread and so common. On the top of it, avian influenza has emerged as a new and serious challenge for the Indian poultry, being such a deadly and devastating disease. Very briefly, within a couple of minutes, just very briefly, <clears throat> the avian influenza was reported for the first time in our country on 18th of February 2006 by the government of India. Because of strict biosecurity measures and massive and rigorous culling operations that were carried out, the disease was immediately brought under control. The, the, the disease was brought under control, which was, in fact, the highly pathogenic avian influenza virus was brought under control. As we know, that avian influenza is caused by highly pathogenic avian influenza virus and the low pathogenic avian influenza virus. By the massive operations carried out at that time, 
the highly pathogenic avian influenza virus was brought under control. But the low pathogenic virus, LPAI, continued to circulate and has become endemic in our country, which is posing a challenge. The characteristic, the propensity of this virus is that it continuously evolves itself. It undergoes mutations all the time. And with mutations undergoing all the time, it is evolving in its virulence, that is, disease-producing power. And now, friends, the situation has come that this so-called low pathogenic avian influenza virus, which was once upon a time virtually harmless, we never took any notice of it at that time, has now become a very pathogenic organism, inflicting heavy mortality in our poultry throughout, I mean, particularly in the month of summer. Somewhere in summer, the mortality has been very high. Somewhere it has been low. There are various explanations. I will not go into that. But the real problem is that it has emerged as a great challenge and as a great problem. The work which has been carried out at the high security laboratory, animal disease high security laboratory at Bhopal, has clearly demonstrated that the virus undergoes drift variation. <clears throat> what I mean by drift variation is, excuse me, it is evolving, it undergoes mutations, increasing its virulence. This is happening with low pathogenic avian influenza virus H9N2 in our country, and this has been documented by the high security laboratory research carried out over there. Friends, for the benefit of poultry farmers and for the benefit of industry, I have recorded my field observations in the form of a monograph entitled Drift Variants of Low Pathogenic Avian Influenza Virus, giving 35 colored photographs, particularly of the postmortem lesions, with a view that they are really helpful. They should be, they can be of diagnostic help, diagnostic aid to the poultry farmers and to the personnel connected with poultry industry. This monograph has been published by Varsha Group at the initiative of Dr. B.P. Manjunath, who happens to be here. And they can be obtained from there should anybody be interested. In conclusion, well, incidentally, these, my observations, are also going to appear in the World Poultry Science Journal. I have given, I, I wrote everything about it and sent the article to the World Poultry Science Journal. It has been accepted and it will be appearing. To conclude my initial talks, that the challenge is there, the respiratory problems are there in our country. We have really got to take them very seriously, and particularly this low pathogenic avian influenza virus, the drift variants, and also the highly pathogenic virus itself. With these comments, now it's my pleasure and privilege to invite Dr. C. R. Behel, who is our first speaker, is going to give his presentation on the topic Indian processed poultry market. But before Dr. Behel, I would request very kindly Dr. Day to introduce the speaker. Thank you, friends. Itself. With these comments, now it's my pleasure and privilege to invite Dr. C. R. Behel, who is our first speaker, is going to give his presentation on the topic Indian processed poultry market. But before Dr. Behel, I would request very kindly Dr. Day to introduce the speaker. Thank you, friends.